ايه تفضل دكتور السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, dear brothers and sisters in islam uh, so long time since we have met one another uh, last month and my apology for not preparing a lot of uh, lectures over the last four or five weeks but today our lecture is about uh, a very challenging subject and they made this title for it uh, to challenge the status quo and as i mentioned in the title we will never give up because of the challenges that face charitable work charitable work is something that me personally started having it since 1982 it's nearly 38 years ago started with the massacre of Sabra and Shatila in camps, uh, uh, camps in Lebanon and started also with my first visit to Bosnia Herzegovina in 1982. So this is where I started to learn about how can I get involved in charitable activities. What we are facing nowadays in the sector the slides are not working, Muhammad. Mukin to Gayer Shariha. Muhammad. Muhammad. Since that time, I've been involved with others in doing these charitable activities. That's why today will be very informative yeah, on what have been happening in the past. This is the content of my talk, which will be eight parts for S formula, international days observed, charity work in Islam, was charitable work, internal and external challenges, solution and conclusion. This photograph will take us back more than 90 years ago to introduce my family to you where I've been brought up in one of the oldest states on earth, Egypt. And the one who's sitting on the seat is my great grandfather. The one standing on his right is my uncle who became a head teacher uh, of one of the secondary schools in Mansoura. And the one on his right and left hand side is my late father. All of them are Azhari and qualified from Al Azhar University and all of them were Hafiz of Quran. The 4S formula, as I mentioned to you today, is extremely crucial for me because I have been brought up in a house which was composed of one side is the theologian, the other side is the social worker. The theologian was presented by my late mother was a very great reader of history and she was a social worker by nature where she used to bring family members and to discuss their family issues uh, in our house. The other side of the family was my father was a theologian. So the discussion was heavy between theology and social work. This 4S formula, which is at Sunni, Shia, Sufi, Salafi is there in my house, because this kind of discussion in the house between the theology and the social work was there all the time, which enabled somebody like me at the age of seven or eight or nine or 10 or 11 to understand how can I bridge build, how can I fill the gap, how can I communicate and how can I network and how can I listen to the discussion between the different family members and the guests who come to the family. 
First time I delivered this 4S formula, as you can see it on the Zoom, Sunni, I am Sunni, because the Prophet Sallallahu because I follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu I follow the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu which call it Sunnah. So I am Sunni, 100% hardcore Sunni. Also I am Shi'at. The word Shi'at in Arabic means you take a sideline to some group. So I take my sideline to the Adil Bayt, to the family of the Prophet Sallallahu That's why I call myself a Shi'at. Shi'at in a sense that I respect the family of the Prophet Sallallahu and all the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu not cursing, not insulting, not backbiting, not scandal mongering, any one of them. Because the word Arabic, for the understanding of Shia means to sideline, to take a side, to be biased to one group, not the other. This is the second S in my 4S formula. The third S for me is Sufi. Sufi is because it's a part of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. He was separating himself from the community, from his family, to stand up and pray and worship Allah in isolation. To purify his soul, and each one of us have got this character in himself or herself. Then I am Salafi as well, because I follow the tradition of the followers of the followers of the followers and the scholars of Islam after the Prophet So the four S formula for me, S Sunni, S Shia, S Sufi, I think should be S O F F I, F I not S U, and Salafi is number four. So with no, with no, with no discrimination or cursing or backbiting to anyone in the community. This is where I was brought up in the uh, family uh, house in Cairo in the 50s and 60s. And Sharaiah uh, Muhammad. Uh, Sharaiah. This is the International Days Observed. So we thank you, United Nations, for making special days to celebrate every year. World Children's Day, International Frontier Day, International Women's Day, World Refugee Day, International Day of Commemoration and Dignity of Victims of the Victims of the Crime of Genocide and the Prevention of This Crime, World Orphans Day, World Kindness Day. We thank United Nations and any other organization are celebrating or remembering or commemorating that but as we are social worker are we as a human being we have to take this mission 365 days a year not only one day and i will stress today on the international day of commemoration and dignity of the victims of crimes of genocide and the prevention of this crime this was a partly made in the dignity and the respect of the genocide happened against the Jewish brothers and sisters by the Nazi in uh, the 30s and 40s from the Second World War. Also, at that time, we remember what happened to the Bosnian between 1992 and 1995. Also, we need to remember on that day what ha was happening at, at the moment to the Rohingya, which came out from the Arakan Porma, and which are called now Myanmar, which is more than one million people are actually uh, uh, in Bangladesh and some other countries as well. Also, at that day, we have to remember the ethnic cleansing and the concentration camps happened to the Uyghur people in China, which nobody is talking about them. Also, on that day, we have to remember what's happening to the people of Democratic Republic of Congo and the people of actually uh, Central African Republic, particularly the hundred plus thousand people who left because of the atrocity and the ethnic cleansing done to them by the anti-Balaka terrorist group in this country and the others. So, but we need not only to celebrate one day, but to keep working hard to prevent this is happening again and again and again and again to anyone and everyone, regardless of race and color and background. Charity work in Islam. I'm very proud of being Muslim. I'm not making any to blink or blink one eye. Like, I want you to be very proud of being Christian. I want you to be very proud of being Jew and others as well. So I have no problem with this. And my pride will let me to bring on the foundation of my understanding to the charitable activity 
the principles of Islam which I bring it from the Quran and from the hadith of the Prophet As you can see it in the first verse in Surah Baqarah 2, the verse number 148, everyone has a direction towards which he turns to or which she turns to. And you find your own direction and you make your own direction. So any and every one of us excel. So excel one another in good works. The good works, which in a very broad sense is the charitable activities. The good work in very broad sense is a charitable activities. Allah will bring you all together wherever you might be for nothing is beyond his power. So Allah here mentioned excel in competing for doing good. Excel in competing or racing for doing good. This is number one from the principles of how to understand uh, charity work in Islam. Number two is a hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu who said in the authority of Anas ibn Malik, anhu, may Allah his name, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, if the final hour comes, while you have a shoot of a plant in your hands, and it is possible to plant it before the hour comes, you should plant it. Don't wait for the result. You should do the act of goodness no matter what without waiting for the result. If the final hour comes while you have a shoot of plant in your hands and it is possible to plant it before the hour comes, you should plant it. Don't wait or expect the results. This is the second principle in Islam. Keep working and don't, 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 don't wait for the results. The second hadith by the Prophet ﷺ who said, Allah, his angels, the inhabitant of heavens and earth, even the ant in his hole and the fish, all those, all those that mention Allah, angels, inhabitant of heavens and earth, and even the ant in the, his hole and the fish, send to us, send blessings upon whom? Upon the one who teaches People, what is good? What is good is a charitable activity. Allah, his angels, the inhabitants of heaven and earth, even the ant in his hole and the fish send blessings upon the one who teaches people what is good. The other hadith is in the behavior. While we are doing this charitable activity, we have to behave well. Uh, Prophet uh, said he is not a believer who eats his food while his neighbor beside him goes hungry and he knows. Yeah, and he is not a truly believer. The one of us amongst us who eat his or her food with, and sleep with a full stomach while his neighbor or her neighbor sleep hungry and he knows. If you know, you should share the food with your neighbor uh, uh, before you go to bed. The other hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu who said, by God, that's not a believer. And he repeated it three times. Said so they asked them, who do you mean Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, answered, he whose neighbor is not safe from him or her. And if your neighbor is not safe from your behavior, is not safe from being annoying to him or her, you are not a truly believer. These are some of the principles which make us to look after our neighborhood, to look after, to, to spread goodness, to spread the act of goodness and to behave well. Okay? These are some of the principles which I took myself from the principles of Islam in Hadith and in uh, Quran as well. What is the definition of charitable work? I make my own definition as you understand because there are too many definitions. But you have to be very proud of yourself of making also your own definition. You shouldn't wait for someone to tell you, this is your, my definition, follow me. My definition, it is a work. Work that is good for others. Any work you do which is good for others. Very simple. Any work you do which is good for others is a charitable work. Regardless of who is responsible and who is benefiting. Yani, 
this kind of charitable activity, if it's good for everyone, we don't care about who is doing it, what's his or her background, and who is benefiting from it. Clear? Very broad. Very broad. Very broad. Uh, the, the charitable work has a lot of dimensions and a lot of different kinds. It has multitude of types. The more you do uh, charitable activities, the more you know that you need to do more and you discover there are different types that you need to, uh, of charitable activities that you need to perform or you need to do at that time. The charitable activities and work is a never ending pathway. The more you go deep, the more you go this direction or this direction or this direction, the more you find it's an endless pathways. Keep taking you from A to Z, and when Z is over, it will be another Z, and another Z, and another Z, and another Z. It's achievement, the achievement of the type of activity you are doing cannot be measured. You can measure it materialistically by the budget, by the outreach, by the number of people benefiting. But there's some other measure, measurement will be measured by the prayers of the uh, people who are benefiting with and by the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your measurement or our measurement is something materialistic. We can make it tangible, but the measurement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessing of the people who are receiving this kind of work from you is something which we cannot imagine. The diversity and knowledge of its dimension have no limits. Charitable activity is very diverse, very diverse. Its knowledge is never ending knowledge. It's a part of life. It's a part of this, the existence of life. And it's part of making life sustainable on earth. So the diversity and knowledge of its dimension, multi, multi, multi dimensional aspects, have no limits. Number five, its effect is far reaching. The effect of the charitable activity are far reaching beyond our imagination. You might plant a tree this year and, and might die after planting it, but after 50 years, such a tree becomes a forest or a garden. And how many birds and animals and insects have benefited, or human beings have been benefiting from one tree that I planted for 50, 60, or 100 years before I died? So its, effect, its effects are far reaching beyond the imagination. Its value is known only by whom? By two, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a creator. Then the people who are benefiting, because the people who are benefiting with are directly receiving the blessing and the impact of it in their own life. This is number six. Number seven, the strength to achieve its mission is granted by whom? It's granted by the creator and the prayers of the recipients. The more the recipients of the charitable activities pray for you, the more you have strength to achieve more and more and more in your life and in the life to come. Spain is a cure for ourselves. We quite often suffer from doing these charitable activities. Some people can call us names, some people can speak bad about us, some people can call our family names, some people can actually uh, make a scandal against us and. Uh, all this kind, the, the long hours, the travel, leaving your family, leaving her family, all this is a pain. But actually, this pain will cure the souls and the hearts and the mind and the spirit of the individual himself or herself or his family or her family as well. Also, the charitable activities will be the source of creation of the future societal leaders. The more we train in the charitable sector, the more will be able to become future leaders for the society. This is the definition and some of the impact of our charitable activities that we are uh, doing. Uh, uh, let me remind you of one of the hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ, as he said, Inna lillahi ibadan, Allah has got a special group of 
سليفز اختصام بقضاء احوال الناس هي ميد ذيم ريسبونسبل تو ريسبوند تو ذا نيدز اوف ذا بيبل حببهم على الخير ليد ذيم تو لاف ذا اكت اوف جودنس وذا اكت اوف تشارتيز وحبب الخير اليهم ان ليد ذا اكت اوف تشارتي تو لاف ذيم يو نو وات از ذا ريوردز فور ذيم انهم الامنون من عذاب الله يوم القيامه they are the people who are going to be saved from the punishment of Allah on the day of judgment. Be one of them. Be one of them. Be one of them. Inshallah. Number five, we talk about the challenges. Why I'm talking about this uh, uh, talk today? Because nowadays we found certain journalists, TV presenters, talk show individuals tarnish badly some credible charitable organization write bad reports fake reports false reports about them being paid by foreign governments and by foreign institutions to particularly tarnishing the islamic sector especially in the west it's very successful here but many organizations doing well competing, competing, competing with the greater, actually, uh, larger organization from the West and establishing its rule in the country. So those kind of individual, miserably looking, who are anti-humanity, anti-Christ, and anti-morality, tarnishing this kind of charitable activity that we are doing, as well as other social activities that we are doing. That's why I'm standing here today saying we never give up what we are doing, no matter what you say and what you talk about and what you say about us, what you do are false and wrong and uh, uh, lies about individuals and about charitable organizations. I, I divided the challenge into two challenges, internal challenges and external challenges. Internal challenges, which is inside all or not all, most of the organization, the young people, always the young men and women are very enthusiastic. But they must have little experience and knowledge of community work. Yes, we need to marry the energy of the young people to the experience and knowledge of the middle-aged elder people. So try to bring both of them together. So please, my young uh, men and women, remember that people have done this work before you were born. Consult them. Take guidance from them. Don't step on their foot. Because they can help you. They can be helping hand for you. Energy and age are good, but not good enough to get the greatest achievement with the more knowledge will more knowledge and more experience. This is number one, internal challenges. The second is approaches. Some of those young people, because of the limited knowledge of understanding the religion, sometimes they twist the text to suit their fundraising capability. They make interpretation different to use their fundraising activities. And they narrow the great scope of the religion into a narrower and smaller scope. If I give an example of the word zakat, zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam. Okay? And of course, we knew that zakat, the, the, the preference is to be spent in the neighborhood. But now we don't have a so called Islamic state and so called Islamic rulers to be able to spread the zakat widely and evenly. And we have a lot of a lot of millions and millions and millions of poor people, Muslims and non-Muslims outside our country. If we give the example of our country like Canada or America or Europe, huh, and they are very wealthy with a very strong social infrastructure, and we have got countries like in Africa or Latin America or in Asia where there's no social infrastructure, we need a lot of help. We have to divide the zakat between what we need to spend locally here and what we need to send actually abroad but when it suits you only because you are only raising funds for your own country you do not say that it's not right to spend it outside and this is where the lack of knowledge 
and narrowness of the scope of jurisprudence will be fatal to the growth of the charitable activity as well as conflicting factors. Price, it kills me all the time. My kurbani is 25 pounds. His kurbani is 24 pounds. Your kurbani is 23 pounds. Why? It is more the a competitive marketing skills. Okay. Orphan this side is 30 pounds a month. Orphan this side 25 pounds a month. Food basket and others. This kind of price and competition is very ugly. We need to sit down. We need to sit down and discuss with one another how can we come out to the community and not to confuse the community. Administrative expenses, another internal challenge. No one can claim, no one can claim, no one can claim there's no admin cost for the operation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made admin cost is one of the eight categories of expenditure of the zakat. The people are actually working for the charity. You don't come and say no for a marketing tool. What you need to say, be very honest. Yes, people can have the right to take it. Okay. And by the way, let me take you to another platform by saying there is no work whatsoever on earth done without admin cost. If you claim that your organization is a zero admin, you have to tell me who is paying the electricity, who is paying for the rent, who is paying for the salaries, who is paying for the transportation. I have no problem. If you have a businessman who is supporting and covering you for this, that's fine, no problem, but declare it. Be transparent. I have no problem that if you have work or endowment scheme to cover for this, there's no problem. Please do, but declare it. Be transparent. But don't come and tell me for the marketing, for being a marketing activity, Oh, no, no, we don't take admin cost. Oh, no, no, what? No, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And by the way, to you viewers, I love this, you all, there's no the international operation in any organization. If you work in the headquarter and in the other field abroad, it will not be less than 15 to 20%. And if somebody tells you different to that, Please, you have to question them again and again and again and again. Uh, number five, first in action. Ah, we are the first. Nobody can be there before us. No, we are the first. So, you are the first. So what? What was the impact of your work? Don't separate of being the first to try to 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 try to, to sideline other organizations. But be the first in making uh, uh, people happy and being with people all the time and put their impact in developing the society. Self praise, oh, we are the best organization, we have got the best team, we have got the best chairman, we have got the best board, we have got the best employees. What is this? We're not in a market calling for some. Uh, Good, goods to be sold, uh, pairs of shocks or pairs of slippers, or whatever. No, no, no. Let us sit down together. This kind of self praise will take me to a journey back thousands of years ago when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. And he was talking to the Satan, to the devil. And the devil was telling Allah, Oh, I am better than him. You created him from clay and you created him from, from fire or flame. Why should I watch the mix you for him? The people who think that they are the best, the people are so close to the devil. You need to show modesty, humility, and be integral and credible to the community. Talking back about other institutions, criticism. Am I, is that why? Oh my God, you give the money to them? Without explaining. Putting the doubt in the hands and the mind of the donor. Why? You give them your fund, astaghfirullah azim. What is this? What is this kind of bad feeling towards another organization is doing a good job like your job or a far more better job than yours? Spending too much money on media is what we see nowadays. What we see nowadays, 
This goes to millions, millions and millions and millions. Lack of transparency. When we have some wrong doing, we cover it up and we change the report and we produce another report. No strategy for the vision, no strategic vision. Why all the time we, we emotionally react? Not planning, not planning, emotionally act. Even I was listening to some of the sayings of uh, 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 Hazrat Abu uh, Hanifa Nu'man, you know, and that during that time, maybe uh, uh, 14, 15, uh, 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 second, third Hijri century, you know, it was developing the expected jurisprudence, the expected jurisprudence. What do you mean by what do you mean by expected jurisprudence? He was telling his students, let us think for the future. What will happen when a problem fall down on your head? What will you react and deal with it? Or how will you be dealing with it? He was expecting something to happen. So he was preparing his student to prepare themselves to respond to the unexpected. Rahmatullah Ali, Al Imam Al Muazzam, the magnificent Imam Abu Hanif al Nu'man. Uh, administrative corruption. Corruption inside an organization, not because you steal money, but you employ the wrong one. You employ the incapable individual who was related to you or from your group from your political party or from your neighborhood. This is wrong, this is corruption. Or you keep the money and don't spend it for a year and year and year, and people are dying outside. Or you do not become transparent with the community and with the authority, and you keep hiding things, hiding your mistakes. This corruption could be internal inside the organization in the hierarchy or even in the government. Some government offices are corrupt. They might need some cash to deal with you and to help you. So this kind of corruption will be internal inside the organization and external if the government offices or officers are corrupt as well. These are some of the internal, uh, uh, some of the internal challenges. The external challenges is quite expected, the donor expectation. Unfortunately, from one and two, as you can see it here, we are donor driven, not needs driven. And donors expect us to do the program at a low cost, speed uh, delivery, and full impact. The lowest in cost, the faster in speed, and the most in impact. How on earth this kind of donors keep pushing you to cut a lot of corners? Once you start cutting a lot of corners, that means that your, your ability to monitor, to evaluate, to manage will be decreased. Let me give you an example. One time a flooding happened or a cyclone happened in one country. And there's two organizations. One of them had a, had a proper planning and needs assessment and said rebuilding of the house in this country will cost between four to $5,000. The second organization said $1,000 because on top of it was a lot of businessmen trying to cut corners, 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 corners. Okay. So definitely the donors did not give the money to the organization who said four or $5,000 for the house. And they gave it to the other organization who said $1,000. The following year, because of the climate change, another cyclone happened in the same area and washed out the $1,000 houses, but the four dollars $5,000 houses stayed intact and strong on the ground. And this is the difference 
between donors who push you to cut corners and donors who understand your uh, uh, mission and understand your need assessment and respect you and give you the full money for building the project. Islamophobia, who are surrounded by Islamophobia. Everything Islamic is fearful. They will prove otherwise. To the banks, the authorities, the regulation, the registration, the movement, and even the perception of the uh, uh, people that were helping. Media, as I mentioned at the very beginning, media distortion of the organizations. I don't know why those media or those group of people, journalists, hate Islam and hate Muslimic organization and calling them names. The people are 24 seven, work hard, extremely hard to reach the unreachable and to achieve the unachievable. And they are achieving it, but the media ignoring them, even talking bad about them. Why this kind of hatred? I call them this kind of individuals, anti-humanity, anti-Christ, anti-morality. When the charitable organization be controlled by the state security, you find in certain countries, the government impose on the organization a general, lieutenant, or officer to be on the top of the organization, to be a CEO, to be the chairman of the board, or could be the head of the program or whatever it is. Why is that? Why? Why? Hundred and thousand question marks. The shrinking civil liberty space, which they think, or they think, or they say, because we have to fight terrorism. What is the charity to do with terrorism? Even you people don't know what is the definition of the terrorism and you do not agree on the definition of terrorism up till now. Politicization of charitable activities. When you swing it to your group, your political party, your jamaat, this is wrong. This is wrong to be neutral, to be above board. Volunteering system in certain countries is prevent, yani the, the public are prevented from becoming volunteers. If you start to become volunteer and start to do something else, to try to clean up roads, clean windows, collect rubbish, the security will arrest you by doing something which you don't have permission for it. Or you don't have to do it. It's not your job. Bureaucracy. In certain countries, without mentioning the name, because we don't want to upset people, to get to organize a fundraising dinner or campaign, you have to go through the bureaucracy of taking permission, which might take a month or two or more. As if you are going to commit a crime. Why? Why we are not seeing this here in the West, unfortunately, and this being observed in the East and South. The weaknesses of the international institution who cannot defend. And if you tell me go to this or regional organization or this global organization, defend you, they can't because they are government organization and they're controlled by government and they have to listen to their own government, unfortunately. Uh, so they cannot defend you anymore. We talked about the current atmosphere and how the media is tarnishing organizations as well as individuals wrongly, unfairly, okay? And we talked about the challenges internal and external. I talked about our pride in our dean to stand up and say we are going to be charitable activity, char charitable activists forever. I'm not going to give up. See me, we are not going to give up. But what's the solution? Let us look about long-term solution and short-term. First of all, we have to keep investing and raising a generation 
that believes in charitable work. Volunteering and giving. Giving does not mean money, giving time, giving ideas, giving thoughts, okay, giving knowledge, all this. We don't want money only from you. We want your brains to give us. We need to kind of to, to build this actually over the years. Number two, making volunteering and volunteerism as a part of the syllabus from the primary school, secondary school, university, even uh, in work as well. Invest in education and uh, fighting ignorance and literacy program. Why? Because the educated nation will be more able to do more charitable activity than the uneducated ignorant nations. Building coalition between organizations, between institutions, building federations, building forums, building platform, building syndicates, building union. We have to sit down as organization, social, charitable, humanitarian, to discuss issues, to look collectively, objectively on the strategy of how to protect our country, our society, our community, and humanity as a whole. How to build partnership. Partnership is an outcome, is a fruit of our work. It's a mean and the result as well. And when we are having our certain uh, school of thoughts, we do not impose it. I'm a Sufi. I don't, I cannot tell everybody to become Sufi and follow me because I'm the chair. When I'm Salafi, I don't want, I cannot make everybody in the organization to become uh, uh, Salafi like myself. Or I am, uh, what do you call it, uh, other religions uh, like a Catholic or like Protestant or like Anglican. I cannot yeah, impose my religious views on others inside the organization. Investing in supporting networking and integration between associations. That's what I'm saying. That's what I said at the very beginning when I was brought up in our family house in Cairo between the theologian uh, sector headed by my father and the social sector, uh, sector headed, headed by my mother. I learned the art of bridge building networking, communication, and uh, filling the gap. Charity work should be independent from the government. Should not be dictated by the government. The government could give the way and bless the way of the work, but do not become control freak on every footstep that the charity is doing to help the society itself. Understanding the local and the global role played by charitable work. Yani we are in a country like Kuwait, or like Saudi Arabia, or like Yemen. Okay. The role played inside Yemen during the conflict in certain zones, and you should know what's our role in this area. So there's regional players afterward. So there's global players. So I have to go from the local, okay, to the national, to the regional, to the global, to understand all the mechanics and mechanisms to understand how other organizations are working in these different atmospheres. This is some of the solution. In conclusion, in conclusion today, if we actually understood the value of charity work, we would be competing with one another to build stronger and more prosperous societies. That is, if we understand, but unfortunately, we only understand charity as money, 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 images, photographs, stage management photographs, and others. If we actually understood the value of charity work, we would be competing with one another to build stronger and more prosperous societies. That's number one. Charity work is the foundation. Foundation for what? That paves the way to positive social change. Positive social change in the country. 
started from our little charity work in the neighborhood. No matter how many challenges we face during our journey, we will never give up until we accomplish our mission. And this is my statement again, even saying it again, and I'm asking each and every one of you to keep saying it. No matter how many challenges we face during our journey, we will never give up until we accomplish our mission. And they tell we accomplish our mission. Number four, charity work is the jugular vein that awakens the hearts of nation and builds the desired future, future, the desired future for the generation to come. Charity work is the jugular vein. You know the two jugular veins here? That awakens the hearts of nations and builds the desired future for generation to come. We keep our promise to Allah, keep coming back at it on an individual basis for each and every one of us. Keep our promise to Allah that we will not give up our charitable mission. We we'll never, no matter what the media says, no matter what people say about us. Even if we have been torn into pieces by different misfortune and distort the, the disastrous calamities. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. And you should not give up. On an individual level, how can the one, the one amongst us live without stepping up to the challenge? What kind of life you think that you can live if you don't step up to meet the challenge and to overcome the challenge and to remove the challenge and to make the challenge yourself by the end of the day? Last but not least, charitable work is the strongest soft power that can benefit societies. The strongest soft power that can benefit societies. It can reach places that state institution and the others cannot reach. It speaks to the public in their language and according to their need Difficult for other institutions to do so. Say it again for you. Charitable work is the strongest soft power that can benefit societies. It can reach places that state institution and others cannot reach. It speaks to the public in their language and according to their needs, difficult for other institutions to do so. This is the charitable activity that I'm talking about since uh, hello hello i cannot move the slide can you move the slide for me please so if you go back to the, the very beginning let me remind you of the title of the talk today we will never give up because of the challenges that face charitable work. Until those people that are not going to stop will carry on, will achieve, will meet the challenges, will be successful, and will stay forever. Okay? If the hour comes, as the Prophet said, if the hour comes, if the final hour comes, while you have a shoot of a plant in your hands and it's possible to plant it before the hour comes you should plant it and this is my final message to each and every one of us whether we are muslims or non-muslims say it again this if the final hours come if the final hour comes while you have a shoot of a plant in your hands and it is possible to plant it before the hour comes, you should plant it. And this means never stop doing charitable activity, even if the hour comes and the sun is rising from the west and the mountains are moving uh, and the skies and the earth 
become differently. Jazakum Allah khair. May Allah bless you. Inshallah, tomorrow will be in Arabic. Ghadan, inshallah, satakun muhadara bil-lugha al-arabiya fi nafsi al-ma'ad. Tomorrow will be in Arabic at 6 o'clock as well. Ghadan, satakun muhadara bil-lugha al-arabiya sa'a sitta misa'an bitawqeet London, tis'a misa'an bitawqeet Mecca al-Mukarramah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.